I'm happy to report that the world hasn't changed completely uh, compared to last year's outlook. This is still a world characterized by continuing energy demand growth. We see an increase of about 40% between 2012 and 2035. That's slowing down uh, as this area of rapid industrialization, especially in Asia but in many developing countries, slows down a little bit. And uh, in terms of the really very big picture, one could phrase the key questions almost in all of questions of energy security. Will there be enough fuels available to sustain that kind of energy demand growth? Our answer to that one is a clear yes. We see new technologies uh, continue to be developed, new fuels entering the picture from shale gas to renewables, and we see continued relentless improvements in energy efficiency and conversions of efficiency across countries that should take care of that problem. Will there be problems with reliability, supply disruptions, undue trade concentrations, all that kind of things? And we, what we observe is, yes, there is a shift uh, in that Asia and to a much smaller extent Europe become almost the sole importers of, uh, of oil and gas and primary energy because North America becomes uh, from a net importer changes to a net exporter. That is an issue which we look at when we discuss oil and gas, which we think should be taken care of simply by keeping trade links and uh, markets open. Do we have a problem with sustainability? What about the carbon emissions? And that's where the bad news are, because in our picture, unfortunately, carbon emissions continue to grow, and also the growth slows a little bit. It's still too fast to meet any of these uh, targets given to us by climate scientists. This is because carbon has no price. We see the big contrast between improvements in energy efficiency, driven by competition, driven by changes in the fuel mix, which just reflect cost efficiency. We see nothing of that sort, no improvement to the same scale, no conversions across country in carbon emissions because it isn't priced. And introducing carbon prices means tagging on to this big driver of productivity, to the power of economic forces, which we see working for energy intensity, but not for carbon.